you've ever been active in cold water, you know how uncomfortable your hands and your feet can get quite quickly. So it's very important to get the right gloves and the right booties so that you can extend your time on the water enjoyably. In this video, we're gonna go over the important points, what to look for in both gloves and booties so you can find the perfect pair. Before we dive into gloves and booties specifically, it's important to understand a few things about neoprene and warmth. For cold water, you'll want at least two millimeter thickness for gloves and booties, but we'll get into the specifics a little later in the video. Generally speaking, the thicker the neoprene, the warmer it's going to be. When deciding, you'll want to factor in water temperature primarily, but it's also important to keep things such as air temperature, wind speed, type of activity, and overall level of exertion in mind as well. The type of seal will make a difference when it comes to the water getting inside. For this reason, for cold water, we recommend going with blind stitch and liquid tape seams. This will let minimal amounts of water inside your gloves and booties. Liquid tape seaming is the standard for your high-end booties on the market today. Just like with your wetsuit, fit is going to be very important. Too large and you're going to have too much water flushing through, which in turn will not keep your hands or feet as warm. On the other hand, if it's too tight, you're going to feel restricted, uncomfortable, and you may even experience numbness in your hands and feet. If you're shopping online, use the sizing guides available. If you're unsure, it's not a bad idea to order multiple pairs and select the one that fits you best and return the rest. If you're shopping in store, try them on. If you feel like you're in between sizes, we recommend opting for the smaller of the two as they will likely stretch a bit over time. While we have heard some people recommend sizing down an entire size, personally, we don't recommend doing that. Having accidentally bought a pair of booties a size too small, I ended up ruining them by ripping off the strap completely, creating a giant hole just by struggling to take them on and off all the time. Yes, some stretching will occur, but it may not happen as quickly or as much as you may expect. Some gloves and booties will include straps. While it's not necessary, the added benefit of a strap is that it will fit the garment closer to your body, which means less water will get in. For booties in particular, if there's a strap around the top, the added benefit of that is that it will prevent the water that's flushing through your wetsuit from getting inside. Now that we've covered the basics, let's take a closer look at the options available for gloves. The biggest factor in deciding what style and thickness of glove is going to come down to water temperature and, not surprisingly, personal preference. Neoprene gloves come in three different styles, your typical five-finger gloves, lobster claw or three-finger style gloves, and mitts. All other things equal, the five finger gloves will provide the best dexterity. However, given that your fingers are all separated, they will get colder faster. The lobster style gloves are a good compromise, however your thumb and index finger will also start to get cold before the rest of your fingers, which can be uncomfortable. Mittens are undoubtedly the champion for warmth, but they are going to make even the simplest of tasks that much harder. As kiters, for example, it's going to be impossible to attach your lines with mittens on. Even adjusting your board straps might be a challenge but for riding in cold water, there's simply no warmer option. Generally speaking, gloves start at about one to two millimeters in thickness and go up to around seven millimeters. There is a trade-off between dexterity or movement and warmth as you get thicker in neoprene. There are plenty of charts available online that give an estimate for neoprene thickness for temperature ranges. Honestly, while these can provide a great starting point, this will come down to personal preference. Some people will prioritize warmth over flexibility or vice versa or they may find that they stay pretty warm or that they tend to get cold quite quickly and in turn will adjust accordingly to their needs. Personally, we like three millimeter or thicker for kiting in spring and fall temperatures in Canada, often opting for five finger gloves. In the colder winter months where the air and water is just above freezing, we move to five millimeter or thicker lobster style gloves. These thicker gloves are great for colder temperatures, but movement is definitely limited. So once the temperatures are warm enough, we happily switch back to the slightly thinner gloves that provide a good balance of warmth and flexibility. Depending on the type of sport that you're practicing, grip may also be an important factor. For example, for kiting, grip on the bar is important, especially in cold conditions when your hands may tire quickly. There are even mittens that are pre-curved to provide more comfort when holding the bar in colder temperatures. For booties, there are a few types to consider. For kiting, we generally avoid reef walkers, as these are typically pretty thin and their purpose, as indicated by their name, is to protect your feet from reef and rocks. Generally speaking, these are made with pretty thin neoprene and not meant to keep your feet warm. As kiters, we generally avoid any booties with really thick soles, as they're harder to fit comfortably into board straps. Instead, we turn to winter booties. These are meant to keep your feet warm, they range in neoprene thickness, and they typically go high above your ankle. If you've been shopping for winter booties, you've likely come across two types, those with the round toe and those with the split toe. The split toe booty separates your big toe from the rest of your toes. 
The advantage for this type of booty is better board control and balance, especially for surfers. The disadvantage, on the other hand, is that in cold water, your big toe is likely going to get colder faster than it would in round toe booties. Again, the choice between split toe and round toe comes down to personal preference. Given our preferred riding style, we generally opt for round toe booties as we finally keep your feet warmer just a bit longer, and given that our feet are in straps on both our twin tip and foil board, a split toe doesn't seem necessary. Booties typically come in the range of 2 to 8 millimeters in thickness. Just like gloves, the thicker the neoprene, the warmer they'll be. That being said, the thicker that they are, the less flexible they'll be. Flexibility of your booties may be of a lesser concern though, depending on the activity that you're doing. For me personally, for kiting, I prefer warmth over flexibility, so in the winter I opt for 8mm booties, and in the fall and the spring I typically go down to 5mm because my feet tend to get cold quickly. Another downside of very thick booties is the added separation between your foot and the board. Having thicker booties will lessen that direct feel with the board, but that's a compromise you may be willing to make for warmer feet. Don't forget to put your wetsuit over your booties so that any water inside your wetsuit flushes out and not directly inside of your booties. Full disclosure, I can really only speak to the gloves and booties that I've personally owned, which is quite limited when you consider all the options on the market. So currently I've been using the Patagonia lobster style gloves and I find them to be pretty good. I will say for the colder temperatures though, I think mittens would be just a little bit better. So I think that'll be my next purchase. In terms of footwear, I am wearing Excel 8 meter booties and these are by far the warmest pair of booties I've ever owned. The only downside is they're a little bit tricky to get off. I need Yuri to help me usually um, as they're pretty fitted. That being said, as a kite surfer and not a swimmer or a diver or a surfer, my hands don't really get that wet and my feet, while they do get wet, they're rarely fully submerged. So if you have any tried and true recommendations, make sure to drop them in the comments below and let us know what sport you participate in as well. In conclusion, so long as you have proper neoprene thickness and the fit is correct, you should be able to keep your hands and feet quite comfortable in colder temperatures. When it comes to style, as we mentioned at the beginning of the video, it will come down to personal preference, which sometimes does take some trial and error. If you're not sure, the best bet is to talk to people at your local beach and see what they like. That's usually a great place to start. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out some of our other wetsuit related videos, as well as subscribe for more videos like this coming in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.